the family of fire control systems we have uh, currently is the FCS 13 RE and the FCS 14. FCS 13, uh, the development started in 2007. The U.S. Army started to take notice of it in 2016. We took all of the lessons learned from a size, weight, height over bore, and capability that the customer was asking for, and we developed the FCS 14. So the FCS 13 and the FCS 14 will work on um, all spade grip weapon systems within the U.S. inventory. That's the M2 heavy machine gun, the Mark 19. It'll go on uh, the M134 Delta minigun. It'll also go on uh, 240s, and it'll go on the H&K GMG also. Well, the FCS 13 is currently fielded as the primary sighting system for the Carl Gustav recoilless rifle. Some of the attachments that we have for both devices, we have a magnifier and a thermal attachment for the FCS 13. And for the FCS 14, we have our dual sensor A focal attachment. So this is both a thermal and a day camera. It provides the gunner both white hot, black hot thermal, and it also provides day camera in 1X, 2X, 4X, and 8X zoom. It's powered. We use a parent-child relationship. So the, the computing comes from the base unit. The uh, power also comes from the base unit, and the control is, which allows us to keep the weight of the attachment very low. And I'll demonstrate on how to attach it. And that's it. So the power source for the FCS 13 is only AA battery. So we have either alkaline or uh, lithium. And then on the FCS 14, we can run two 18650 lithium cells, four CR123 cells, or we have external power. So you can drive it off of any 12 or 24 volt uh, power system. So the 14 also has video feed out. So whatever the DSA is seeing, can be fed out to a, either a tablet or possibly a, a fused vision system, whether it's inside of night vision or a helmet mounted display. So both the FCS 13 and the FCS 14 have an integrated laser range finder. They have a ballistic matrix inside the system that allows the gunner to get uh, up to 244 mil rads of vertical elevation. It provides the gunner with a corrected point of aim that, that uh, is calculated off of altitude, propellant temperature, um, gun angle, and obviously range to target. What we've been able to see on, on live fire ranges is a probability of hit of 30% all the way up to 92%. With a crew serve weapon system like the Mark 19 here, first round hits are very important because when you start to engage a target or a threat, they typically don't like to stay in the same place. And so once you start to engage them, they, they do what's called displace. They'll move locations, which makes it very difficult to engage a moving target. The sites, both of them, will provide a user with a moving target capability, which gives you your lead and hold. So on the FCS 13, we have a 3X magnifier that will give you a full field of view magnification. And we have on, on the FCS 14, the DSA will provide you with, again, 1X, 2X, 4X, and 8X zoom for both thermal and day camera. Both systems can be used in the day and in the night. The FCS-13 relies heavily on the soldier-worn night vision device. So if they're running a 14, the capability is a little shorter. If it's a 31, it's better, and so on. The, the, the 14, without the DSA attached, is night vision compatible. With the DSA attached, now you have thermal and day camera that the thermal would be the ideal uh, system you would use at nighttime in that case. The 14 is our next gen fire control system that we took all of the input that we got from the 13 and added them into the 14's design. Um, the system is currently available. Usage life varies greatly with how much you use the DSA versus the, the, just the base unit. Um, the, the mission profile that we typically meet or have been requested is a 72 hour mission profile and we meet that with a battery change.